Why, why the gangs of New York? Um, what starts to happen, you know, in these areas where there's, there's no community youth programs, where there's no police, um, you know, to protect, um, you know, uh, neighborhoods or whatever, um, where there's no jobs, where there's a feeling of no opportunity, you start to have these youth gangs form. These youth gangs were to protect local businesses. They were to, you know, basically for a lot of these kids who were largely, um, you know, uh, Puerto Rican and black, you know, to protect them from racialized violence from, you know, white kids um, that would pick on them and beat on them and stuff like that. So they started to form, you know, crews uh, in, in that sense. Now, again, a lot of these uh, young people, their parents were locked up in jail or unemployed. Um, maybe they didn't have any, any parents. Um, it was just really hard, you know. A lot of them really struggled in school. If you watched Flying Cut Sleeves, which is a, a documentary um, I did post for something for you to watch, um, it's, it's a pretty great documentary. There's also another one called 80 Blocks from Tiffany's, um, which also focus, they both focus on, on these gangs. Um, in Flying Cut Sleeves, um, the director, I believe her name is Rita Fletcher, she was a middle school teacher, or high school teacher, excuse me, I believe, and she interviewed a bunch of the, her students who were in these gangs, and then she goes back and talks to them, I don't know, 20 years, 20 years later, uh, and includes uh, Benji Melendez of the Ghetto Brothers, who you'll see in Rebel Kings. Um, you know, but there wasn't a lot for these kids to do. I mean, just imagine being 15 years old. Imagine when you're 15 years old, you know, there's no sports for you after school. There was no music programs or art programs for you after school. Take away all the things that you did when you were young, like playing video games and fucking off on social media and YouTube and stuff like that, right? What are you gonna do? All you have is time, right? And you look around you and you don't see opportunity. You see the opportunity that's been taken from you, right? You see the rubble that's been cast upon you. Um, you know, so you find community in, your, in, in, in people in your neighborhood and in your gang, your family. I mean, they called a lot of these people that were in these gangs, called them, called them families, okay? Um, but at the time, you know, we're talking about now we get into the early 1970s. There's a lot of gang members in New York City and a lot of Puerto Rican, um, a lot of Puerto Rican gangs. I mean, 70% were Puerto Rican. And this is about 11,000 gang members. That's quite, quite a lot. And it's different than the gangs that you, you see now where you know, they're trafficking and selling drugs and they have automatic weapons. These are like youth gangs where they had knives and chains, uh, maybe a pistol here and there, you know, um, where they hung out and they protected their, their turf you know, from other gangs and people from other neighborhoods and from junkies. I mean, they were... Um, notorious for going after uh, drug dealers, actually, heroin dealers in their neighborhoods that they thought were ruining their neighborhoods. Um, there was a lot of female members, too, to these gangs. And these female members were not like, like um, in the Hells Angels or other types of gangs where they're treated like pieces of, of meat. And these gangs, like, they were vital. And those women were not included in, in the, you know, the 11,000 um, estimate. Um, so there was often, like, a black spades girls division or, you know, whatever, um, you know, a, a javelins, you know, uh, girls division, you know, or, or whatever. And you'll see a little bit of that in, in Rebel Kings. Now, you can see in this map um, a little bit of, like, the South Bronx, and you can kind of get a perspective of where all the gangs are. So if we look, um, one that's real important is the Black Spades, and they're from, um, you know, uh, a you know, Soundview area, uh, Bronx River Projects. Um, and this is largely, you know, a black, uh, a black teen teen gang, and we'll learn about uh, uh, an important figure in hip hop culture named African Man Bada, who was a, a member of the Black Spades. I mean, that's the thing is a lot of the early pioneers of, of hip hop music, culture, dance, um, DJing, MCing, you know, come, come from gangs, or at least were associated with them, you know, um, et cetera. 
And it kind of gives you a sense. Again, you can see the Cross Bronx Expressway. They had different divisions. So there's several Black Spades divisions. There's the Savage Skulls. They have several divisions. Um, the Bachelors, Peacemakers, uh, the Ghetto Brothers. You can see where they're, where they're located. Um, and so, yeah, again, this is the part of the South Bronx. I mean, you can look at the South Bronx too. It's like, you know, if you're in the... Bronx River area, I mean, you're, you got a nice view of, uh, of, uh, of Rikers Island, you know, the main prison for all of New York, you know. Um, so this kind of gives you a sense of like the gang layup. Now, as you go into the North Bronx, okay, you start to have like the Golden Guineas. This is in the Tremont area, um, you know, Javelins, uh, the Reapers. You start to have actually like white, you know, your white um, Irish and Italian gangs as well. So it just wasn't, you know, it was just youth gangs, um, but you had more still a, a, a white population, I guess, in the, in the North, North Bronx. A lot of those people hadn't left for the, for the suburbs as part of the white flight. Um, so again, I just kind of want us to get a sense here of, of, of the dynamics of New York City, because I do think it, it, it it really gives us a sense of what young people had at the time, um, what had been taken from them, um, how their neighborhoods were controlled and controlled by whom and, and why they ended up in certain places and why hip hop came out of this one small specific place, the South Bronx uh, borough of, of New York City. And, and the main reason why we connect it, and you'll see a connection in Rubble Kings to hip hop and music and stuff, is is not that necessarily like all gang bangers, gang members, you know, from these youth gangs became hip hop heads, because that's just not true. And also, like, there's a mythology that you know, hip hop culture came around and the gangs just stopped because everybody got into hip hop and, and stuff. And that, that's also not true. It just didn't go away. It just became less important and other things became more, more important, mainly girls, uh, which you'll kind of see in the, in the documentary and style, like uh, actually being fresh and not being, I mean, these gangs you'll see, they really um, adopted like the one percenter, you know, motorcycle sort of ideas with like your colors and a lot of the practices like the Apache line like beating you know blood in blood out beating it beating someone in initiating them in um, a lot of the iconography um, they appropriated like uh, Nazi uh, iconography um, you know but really like a lot of like a lot of them had like you know um, mostly you know uh, jean jackets with their colors with their colors on it so um, you know a lot of um, you know, a lot of these, the older members were Vietnam War vets. So you had a lot of these kids who went to Vietnam when they were 18, 19, come home in their 20, you know, if they lived and, and, and um, you know, they, they, they became part of gangs, as you'll see with, um, you know, Karate Charlie and stuff in the, in the film. Um, but I just think it's just so important just to kind of see, like, what was going on. And you'll see it more in the film. You just got to know, like... Things were hard in the South Bronx. Why were they hard? You know, it was because of, you know, gentrification. It was because of racialized urban planning, red, red line, you know, white flight um, from, from these air areas, uh, you know, broken windows, police tactics, uh, planned shrinkage, and, and, you know, all of these things that were initiated by government, you know, in so many ways, and those in power, um, you know, created really these harsh conditions and these, that's why hip hop is like this beautiful flower because it came out of, out of, out of this, um, you know, so everything you know about hip hop kind of came, was born out of, out of this, uh, these circle, social circumstances.